Hello again. So we got another lesson on recursive and special sequences. This is specifically iteration. It's just like, you know, it's, it's following a, uh, a function upon itself over and over and over again. And it's actually it's got a pretty cool application. You know, it was always really hard to sell, you know, what the application was. And I saw a PBS special one time that actually was pretty cool. I'll explain that later, though. I just want to do this problem. So if you're familiar with finding inverse of functions, you know, like f of g, of x, you know, like, well, what we're going to do is we're going to do a composite function, but we're going to do a composite function upon itself, you know, f of f of f of x, which also can be written f, f, f of x, where, like, I've got this, you know, hypothetical where I've got a function where that's equal to x plus 2, and uh, I'm going to start with something where x not equals 1, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this value in, figure out what it is, then I'm going to substitute that value into this function again, and so on and so on and so forth. And what it causes is it causes a sequence, and it's really quite cool. And since we're on the subject, why not talk about it? So uh, I've got to do this three times because there's three Fs. You know, it's like do it once, do it twice, do it three times. So the first one we're going to do is F of X naught or F of 1. And when we do that, we have F of 1 equals 1 plus 2. So that's equal to 3. We did that once. We you know, did this once. Yeah. We just got to do this two more times. So let's do this two more times. Now what we do is, well, our new point isn't 1, it's 3. So we're going to put in f of 3, but it's into the same function, x plus 2. Well, x this time is not 1, it's 3. Plus 2 equals 5. And we're going to do it another time. We have to do it once, twice, three times. If there were eight Fs, you'd have to do it eight times. So when we do it our third time, it's not F of 1, it's not F of 3, it's not F of 5. Oh, it's F of 5, pardon me. And that's equal to 5 plus 2 equals 7. So our sequence, if we write it out, is 1, that's our first point, then 3, then 5, than seven, but it actually is painfully obvious what it is. I mean, if you uh, if you don't really look at the subscripts or you know tr try to figure it out, it's actually really quite easy. It's just like okay, all we're really doing is we're going to add two each time. So the first one's one, so the next one's going to be three, the next one's going to be five, the next one's going to be seven. I think we only did four terms. The next one's going to be nine, eleven, uh, thirteen, fifteen, wait, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, so on, depending how far it asks us to go. But that's an example of um, a sequence. And the, oh wow. It's a recursive formula within the, well, it's iteration within the subset of uh, recursive formula, pardon me. And actually, it's quite cool. I never thought I could really explain this besides just saying, you know, like, oh, this is what we're doing, just getting to buy into it. But I saw a PBS special one time, which I thought was really cool on fractals and fractal math. And basically, what they did was they had a team of scientists go to the uh, oldest forest in Europe. I forgot what the name of it is, and I don't want to mispronounce it anyways. And besides, uh, depending where you are, there's two different names. There's one on the Belarus side, and there's one on uh, Poland side. You know, it's split in between both of the, the countries. It, it occupies land in both countries. And this team of scientists went up, and they, they, they noticed that uh, patterns in nature tend to be fractal. And what I mean by that is, like, if you take a tree, and then you, like, magnify on a smaller aspect of the tree, uh, it's still got a uh, good definition, even even though you think that it wouldn't. Like uh, like a small little twig, you expand it, kind of looks like a branch. Expand it, and it looks like a bigger and bigger area of the forest. Like um, I guess the best way to explain it, besides that PBS special, is like with a snowflake. You look at a snowflake, and you think that it's uh, you know very defined, and then you think if you go closer, it's not going to be composed of anything really. But when you magnify it closer, you can see that it's actually quite intricate in nature. And it's actually a, it's a subset of the bigger piece. You know, it looks like the bigger snowflake did, but you magnify. And if you magnify again, you notice that it still looks like it's constructed. A fractal is basically s small pieces that are constructed into a bigger part. You know, it's like, you know, if I keep, if I keep uh, making it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, I'll still notice that it's got very fine detail, which is very similar to the big picture, as it were. And there's actually people who do that. And they draw pictures, they draw like a painting, and then they draw paintings within the painting, and over and over again. That's like an example of fractal math, uh, which falls under recursive and special sequences in its own right. And you can make an argument for that. Uh, 
Yeah, that was my tangent on PBS and all that other stuff, but I hope that was actually useful or at least somewhat fascinating. Uh, with that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.